Right, let's start. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the ID Tech X show here in Santa Clara. I think we've got a truly great show for you over the coming days. We have a very international show. We have attendees from 58 countries. We have speakers coming from over 280 uh, companies and some 3,500 people here. So plenty to see, uh, learn about, and hopefully many new connections to be made. Now, for those of you who have been before, you probably realize this event is quite unique. It covers seven key emerging technology areas, which are shown on the slide here. And the reason why we chose these is that there's huge growth and opportunity occurring in each of these sectors. And so by bringing them together with concurrent conferences and one, current, uh, one trade show covering it all, you can see these full supply chains in one place. So whether you're a materials company or a component provider, you can meet end users from a variety of different industry verticals. And if you're coming from one of those verticals, you can see the new capabilities coming through from components and materials which will allow you to hopefully differentiate your products and grow your businesses. So cutting across these seven uh, key technology areas that we'll be looking at, I think there are four key themes which we look at within this event. The first is the huge range of enabling materials and manufacturing advances that we'll be looking at. So we'll be covering everything from conductive inks to quantum dots to dye attached materials and much more. And these are enabling a huge range of new opportunities in different sectors. The second key theme, which I think comes across many of the different topics we look at, are the new form factors of electronics. So moving away from rigid uh, circuit boards in boxes to devices which can be flexible, stretchable, and even structural electronics. We then also have the theme of the increasing ubiquity of electronics enabled by IoT uh, sensors. We have more things, more electronics getting into things such as clothing and wearables. And kind of across that as well is that we have huge change happening in industries, whether it's consumer electronics, mobility or retail, and this change has been driven by many different things. It may be governments who are seeking to uh, be more environmental, or it could just be greater demands from consumers. And uh, we think and what we're showing at this event is how all these different technologies will have a role to play in enabling some of that change and create opportunities for companies going forward. So what I'd like to do over the next 20 minutes or so is just introduce you to some of the themes and topics that we carry at this event, just to really whet your appetite, to give you an idea of what you can expect to learn much more from and see much more about at this show. Let's start off first with um, how electronics is changing the shape. Uh, the form factors of electronics is, is very much, you know, incredibly changing. The last 60 years or so, if we look at developments around electronics, they're getting smaller, they're getting lower power, um, and uh, they're getting faster. But the race has been on for that, and people are spending billions of dollars to build the next new best fab. Um, but that's where all the competition has mainly been about. Very surprisingly, not many organizations have really looked at um, changing the form factor and shape of electronic, which has pretty much been the same for the last uh, 60 plus years. Until now, you know, at this event, uh, one thing which we think is very exciting is how electronics is changing form factor. It gives companies a new way to compete. A few examples of that are products which are being invigorated. If we look at the smartphone market to the tablet market, this is fairly flat in terms of growth. And that's one of the reasons why so many companies have invested billions of dollars in creating things such as plastic based displays and foldable displays. You can see some of our data on this chart here over the coming years that will rise to a fairly significant market, $20 billion of foldable displays alone. And yes, the first versions were problematic. These are hard challenges to, to resolve. But for those that can do it and can get there first, then there's huge opportunities for those companies going forward. It's not just about foldable displays, it's also about reinventing and radically changing human machine interfaces thanks to technologies enabling 3D electronics. An example of that is um, in-model electronics, one of the topics within structural electronics that we cover at this event. And that's a market we think growing to at least $1 billion 10 years from now. So form factors is one theme of the event, um, but it's not just about improving existing products or user interfaces. Uh, with new shapes of electronics, we can also create new markets, things that weren't feasible before uh, because we didn't have these capabilities before. And in a lot of these cases, half the work is only in inventing the technology. Then there's a lot of work that needs to be done in actually creating the product, which didn't exist before, and also creating the market for it. 
And we hope that in our own small way this event helps uh, with organizations involved in that sort of quandary by bringing together different brands and different creative people within large organizations seeking growth and differentiation along with the companies who are providing these different capabilities. So form factor is um, one trend. Um, now if we move on, another key theme at this event is the increasing ubiquity of electronics. And here, of course, we have greater and greater sensor proliferation um, into many different applications and huge innovations in sensors on many fronts, not just form factor, but also they're becoming smaller, lower power, newer capabilities, and some level of fusion as well. And one common benefit that many of these sensor innovations have is that they're radically improving the user interface for uh, consumers and people who use different products. Take, for example, um, the, the uh, improvement in image sensing. Uh, we have now phones which you can log on to thanks to advances in 3D sensing. In other areas, mobility will be radically transformed as we move away from driving our own vehicles to vehicles driving us thanks to a range of sensors such as LiDAR, uh, radar, and other technologies. And even in retail, you know, for many, many years now, uh, people have talked about having a tilting supermarket having humans not doing unproductive work, just scanning barcodes and illuminating tills and supermarkets. But that's now becoming reality, thanks to technologies such as RFID, uh, machine vision. We have many retailers around the world, in the US, and also particularly strong in Asia, who have now put in place a number of stores, at this point um, fairly pilot stores, and they're using these to um, trial um, these systems and these technologies going forward. So, of course, connecting these different types of sensors, IoT, is very important. That's also a key theme at this event. We have a dedicated single track um, on IoT which covers the applications and the wide range of technologies as well. With IoT, there's a huge opportunity and there's many applications spread across many different sectors. And that's also, I think, one of the challenges is to know where to target um, in all of this. And so that's something that IoTechX can help you with, and particularly in this program we will focus on some of the key growth areas. Those are areas around um, government uh, funded or government mandated IoT projects, for example, um, smart meters, and in particular in things like smart cities. And so at this event we have a session looking particularly at the growth and opportunities in smart city applications. But from an enterprise level, where the projects are much more ROI driven, uh, we'll have sessions looking at predictive monitoring, things like use of RFID for apparel tagging, and much more. But within IT, not only is there a huge range of applications, there's also a huge range of technology choices behind that, um, which can be a challenge as well for organizations to know which one to use. We've got a huge number of protocols, at this event, we aim to uh, help you understand all those different options and we'll be going through those with leading organizations uh, behind each one, telling you about the benefits and the applications that their technology is suited for. For example, on the one hand, we have devices which are low power, wide area networks, LP1, and that's rising quickly. That's over about 200 million connections this year. Uh, there's many choices even within that. You have unlicensed versions or you have licensed versions. And the licensed versions under NBIT is even now being pulled into the 5G standard. And we'll also be covering 5G uh, because of the great opportunities within IT that that will bring going forward. But on the other hand, we have the humble but very fast growing um, RFID uh, industry. This year, about 20 billion RFID tags will be sold. Um, highlights there include RAIN and UHF RFID, with 15 billion tags being sold, and two thirds of those will be going into apparel. That industry alone is growing 18% by unit numbers just from last year to this year. We'll be covering um, the latest applications and growth into things beyond apparel at this show. We'll also be covering innovation in other sectors. So if we look at NFC, for example, this year we've had the first products come to market based on silicon-free ICs, so flexible ICs which can come in eventually at a cheaper price point, and already tens of millions of those have been sold. So we'll be looking at the innovations across the range of these different technologies. So bringing together the change in form factors, the, the greater use of sensors and new type of sensors, connectivity, one of the sectors which is benefiting from that is wearables. In 2019, that's a market now of over uh, $50 billion, as you can see 
see there. Some of the fastest growing aspects have been smart watches and fitness trackers. Over the last five years, that's grown quite considerably. AR and VR is growing, but still from a smaller base, and we'll be covering some of the challenges around AR and VR in this event, um, and the progression to overcome those to enable faster growth. We then have more mature industries, sectors such as um, the headphones and hearing aids, uh, which for you know for many years haven't really changed that much, but they too now are getting smart. They're pivoting into sectors such as healthcare, whereby they can use the benefit of being in your ear to monitor things like poor body temperature, heart rate, and much more. So many of those um, sort of more mature and older players now moving into this uh, new world of smart wearables, adding more value and more function to the devices they're making. But what I'd like to show you here is how many of these different themes you know, come together and set so nicely at this event. If we look at the healthcare industry, of course, we all know the huge problems going forward. We have an aging population, more people in the world to look after, um, a rise in chronic diseases like diabetes and heart rate issues. Um, and here we have examples of um, how, with electronic skin patches, for example, Technologies from enabling materials, flexible electronics, connectivity sensors are coming together to do really useful things for people, and it's a significantly growing area. This electronic skin packages will grow to about $20 billion, uh, from about $6 billion this year. So in 10 years' time, that's a huge market increase. And in fact, we see medical wearables as the fastest growing category within wearables as a whole over the next five years or so, doubling in size to uh, just under $20 billion. So uh, it's a really nice intersection of many different technologies, and as such, we'll be covering healthcare across many of the different streams at this event. It's even related to being enabled by many of the different types of materials which we're going to show, whether it's um, arrays of carbon nanotubes or graphene, which are now being increasingly deployed for breath sensing to monitor a variety of elements. We're covering those sorts of material-related innovations related to healthcare as well. Now, another industry which is undergoing a radical amount of change is mobility. And this is happening in several phases. Of course, the first phase is we have the um, the move from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles. And that's coming about because governments around the world at different rates are really mandating that and enforcing that. But we then also have the second wave, which is the greater rise of autonomy. So as vehicles become more and more autonomous and we move to mobility to service, there's less need for people to buy their own car. And so between 2028 to 2031, depending on how aggressive the model is, uh, we see a peak passenger car scenario, um, and thereafter, people call these vehicles on demand as when they need them. So if you're an OEM in this room, or if you're supplying into the vehicle industry, then there's lots to think about as to what your company needs to do beyond uh, this 10-year time frame. And at this event, um, you know, we explore many of the huge opportunities going forward in different types of electric vehicles, whether it's um, electric tractors, which may seem niche but, niche, but these are huge niche sectors, all the way through to other types of land, water, and air electric vehicles. And again, as an example as to how all the different technologies that come at this event, and by the companies in this room relate and come together in some mobility space, we see those opportunities whether you're in material supply, you know, as we move to more and more electric vehicles, that means moving to things like power electronics, and there you have issues around the heat management. Um, there's also issues and opportunities for getting to lighter weight vehicles, and so there's huge opportunities there for material companies. Of course, within the electric drive chain, there's opportunities for companies to create motors and many other aspects. One of the key highlights will be energy storage where the value of batteries um, will be a significant part of the overall car and the huge opportunities for those in the energy storage uh, supply chain. And that's also one of the reasons why we cover energy storage at this event in its own uh, single track, uh, covering innovations there. And not just for electric vehicles, we also cover new shapes of batteries relevant to IoT, wearables and other applications. And then for those of you who are involved in sensors, or connectivity, or flexible displays, all of those have application in electric vehicles going forward as well, which is one of the reasons why we cover that topic along with healthcare and others at this event. Now, for some of you who may have attended this event two years ago, you may remember that we had the solar racing car um, on show um, in the exhibition hall, uh, which was powered completely uh, by solar and structural solar on our bodywork. Well, here we are two years later, and in the image there you see an image from Lightyear um, with structural solar. 
Um, this is um, helping supply energy into the vehicle. It's not completely powering it, and we actually have the, uh, the CEO of the company here. Uh, but it's an uh, interesting example how in just two years we've seen that uh, develop from you know something that's sort of fairly academic and niche to now a real commercial product. And I think at this event we'll be seeing many things which will probably also be equally as big uh, just a couple of years from now. So bringing it back full circle to enabling materials. As I mentioned at this event, we'll be covering everything from quantum dots to conductive ink and many other materials and their opportunities going forward. But one material in particular that we'll look at is uh, graphene, which has its own dedicated sessions and track as well. This is a, an industry where the material value is growing tenfold over the next ten years. And we're beginning to see it move beyond sort of small test tube cell quantities um, and R&D purpose um, uses into real volume cells. The first key applications being in composites and heat management. For example, Ford are using graphene for heat spreading um, in some of their vehicles. And the second key category is the use of graphene in electronic or electrical devices such as energy storage, um, sensors, where for example in a photo detector, uh, graphene can give a better, broader um, uh, spectral um, sensitivity. And so we'll be covering those different applications and also the material innovations there, not just the graphene, but also many other materials. And then another key topic in this event, and one I think which has already been covered on multiple times over just the last 10 or 15 minutes, is the printed, flexible, and organic electronics industry. And taking a step back, in 2019, this is an industry <laughs> worth uh, just over $37 billion. The highlight here in terms of what's taking up most of that market revenue is OLED displays. But there are also billion dollar sectors in sensors and conductive ink. And there's still many emerging sectors which are now beginning to grow quite quickly. Some of these have been developed some time, others only a few years and are seeing very strong growth. And so at this event we'll be exploring all of the latest state-of-the-art capabilities of those technologies and perhaps more importantly their application. You know, this event is very much about the commercialization of emerging technologies. It's not just to pat each other on the back and say what a great job everyone's done developing them. It's really about making money um, from these going forward, which is why during the events, you know, we have many uh, different end users from different industries talking about their needs and their requirements and what they're looking to do with these technologies. So all in all, as you can see, there's going to be a huge amount to see and learn about at this event. And I think it is indeed you know, quite a, a spectacular event this year. We have 268 exhibitors. It's a very international event with attendees coming from 58 countries. And one thing I think in particular is that I believe our exhibition is the best we've done yet. There's just so much going on and so much to see. We've added several new pavilions on this year. So we have pavilions which are focused by um, by, by country, by technology type, or even by application type. For example, the new pavilion we've had on this year is around uh, healthcare innovations and sensors in healthcare innovations. In addition to that, uh, there's, there's lots more going on in the exhibition. In addition to those 218 plus organizations, uh, we have ITECX Launchpad, which is where you can see 12 early stage companies who are bringing to market new products and be showing those products and prototypes here at this event many showing it for the first time. Demonstration Street also helps bring these things to life. You know, we're really, um, we think it's really important not just to show these things in PowerPoints, but to show um, the, these things so you can get your hands in them and play with them and, and see how good they are. And that's what Demonstration Street is about. But of course, all the exhibitors will also, as much as possible, be showing things on their booth. And we recognize that events like this, you're coming, you know, not just to learn, and see what's out there, but also to do business, to meet the right people, customers, partners, and so on. But with this many people, with some three and a half thousand attendees, that can be quite difficult. And so we're working again with Brella this year. If you haven't done it already, I recommend you download the Brella app. You just select our event, it's free for you to do as, a, as an attendee here. And it will ask you a few questions about what you do and what you're looking for, and it will match make you uh, with others. And so therefore, hopefully you can have productive one-to-one -one meetings. And already as of this morning, I think about 500 one-to-one uh, -one meetings are being set up. So please make sure we use that and hopefully that will be another return on investment that you see from this event. So I'd just like to uh, thank our key sponsors of the show. Uh, so we have a number of platinum sponsors and they've done a huge amount to support our show um, and, and what we do. 
The first is uh, Minds, and you'll be hearing from the CEO of Minds as we to uh, later on, who I think are doing and leading the way in um, the e textiles. They're doing a huge amount in uh, textile computing, some really exciting things. They're very focused on the value this provides, not just the technology, but looking at the application of these devices as well. The next platform sponsor we have is Novacentric. So Novacentric provide a range of um, tools and materials which customers <coughs> use to enable their printed electronics applications. We've got a fantastic new design booth this year, so uh, please do take a look and many new things to show. And then we have the Rain RFID Alliance, who are a um, subsection of the AIM Alliance, which is a not for profit group. Um, and they're a membership organization aimed at accelerating the adoption of passive UHF RFID. And going by the rate of sales of UHF RFID over the last few years, I think they're doing a pretty good job. So at their booth, many of their member companies will be there. You'll be able to see the latest developments from those companies and the latest use cases of UHF RFID going forward as well. And then, also a big thank you to Xenon. Xenon provide pulse light solutions. A lot of their equipment will be on the show here. This can be used for a variety of applications, but particularly in relation to this event, um, they're helping companies um, enable their print electronics um, products and uh, manufacturing. And of course, we have many more. I'd particularly like to thank our gold sponsors, but um, the exhibitors, and also everyone in this room. Thank you for coming. I know you've made an investment in your time and money to be here. But I also hope you see a really good ROI from everything you learn and pick up, and hopefully the connections you make. So I'd just like to uh, finish off by telling you a bit more about ID Tech X. Uh, we're 20 years old this year. And of course, one of the things we do is uh, host events. But it's part of the open service we provide in helping organizations understand these different emerging technologies and how they can benefit from them. We have a team of really good technical analysts, and so they work alongside our clients on technology appraisal, which includes uh, deep technology benchmarking, technology scouting, company profiling. I think one of our real strong uh, you know, strengths is our analysts that are very technical, and so we can really understand and analyze these technologies versus other types. Um, and therefore really understand the best applications for these. We also look at the market opportunity, we do voice and customer interviews and that allows us to size up the current market and also the, the potential going forward. And we provide uh, strategic guidance and these platforms to events to showcase products and have services such as subscriptions providing data on an ongoing timely basis which is created uh, globally from organizations that we visit. So, if you'd like to learn more about us or how we can help you, and we'd certainly like to learn more about your businesses, then please do approach our booth, which is M20 on the exhibit floor. So, that's the uh, brief introduction. Hopefully, um, it gives you some ideas to some of the huge range of different things we'll be covering at the show. We've got a really fantastic lineup of corner speakers who, each in their own way, will be covering a couple of the different topics I've mentioned and how these things tie together for <coughs> their organizations. Thereafter, the trade show will open, and then after that, uh, we'll come back and we'll have separate conference tracks for each of the different topics I've mentioned. And of course, as a conference attendee, you're free to uh, move between those because there is so much overlap between those different topics. So, let's go. The next speaker, uh, Dr. Gatry Dilich from that uh, uh, not so small company, General Motors. Um, and she'll be presenting on everything from energy storage to flexible displays into electric vehicles. So uh, welcome, Gatry. Thank you. 